This ride was in the Gallatin National Forest just outside Bozeman, Montana. We started in Highlight Canyon and rode over the mountains into Gallatin Canyon. We crossed the mountain range on trails that passed between Highlight and Divide Peaks. The entire ride was 31 miles, half of the distance was single track, and the other half a combination of ATV trails and Forest Service roads. We started in Highlight Canyon and took trail number 427 up to the divide where we picked up the Storm Castle Trail number 185 for the ride down into the Storm Castle drainage. From there we took the Forest Service roads and ATV trails over to Swan Creek where our shuttle vehicles were waiting. The GPS indicated our moving time for the ride was about 2 hours and 45 minutes with another 2 hours for breaks, lunch, pictures, and stops to check out the views. Great. Oh, you get around there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, thanks. I'm the last bike. Oh, yeah. I would like to talk for a minute about the difficulty of this ride. I would like to be able to give someone who hasn't done this ride a good idea of what to expect. First, I'll talk about obstacles, barriers that can potentially be impassable. I would put rock ledges, hill climbs, logs, switchbacks, creek crossings, and mud bogs in this category. Surprisingly, this trail didn't really have any hill climbs or rock ledges that presented any real difficulty. The only real difficulty came from switchbacks. The switchbacks on trail 427 were generally fairly wide without much exposure and were not difficult. We were going up these switchbacks. On the other hand, I would wet rate the switchbacks on the way down trail 185 as difficult. There were a lot of them, probably 20 in all. They were steep, tight, and had a lot of side hill exposure. I got through these obstacles by walking the bike around the worst switchbacks. Being able to do this made the obstacles a bit physically demanding, but in no way something you couldn't do. It's hard to say how difficult these switchbacks would be going the other direction going up. I suspect they could be very challenging. The next trail characteristic I would like to talk about is the trail surface. By this I mean is the trail generally covered with rocks, roots, mud, sand, slick gravel, rain ruts, or is cupped out, smooth packed dirt, or loamy. The trail surface would typically add to difficulty from an endurance point of view. These two trails had many areas covered with rocks. They were typically loose football size rocks that could easily kick you off the bike if you weren't well balanced. They provided a challenge and meant that you couldn't pick up a lot of speed but were very doable for the average rider. We were on the trail in late August in pretty dry conditions. I would suspect that early in the year trail 427 in particular could present much more of a challenge from mud and slick roots. The width of the two single tracks was generally about 18 to 24 inches, which I would say was about perfect. It was wide enough that you had some room to work around trail debris and was still narrow enough to provide the challenge of a single track. Exposure is the final thing that can add to the challenges on the trail. Steep side hills and drop-offs can greatly increase the risk of mistakes, especially combined with obstacles and difficult trail surfaces. 
There was a relatively high degree of exposure on the steep side hills on both sides of the Overall, I would say these trails would be rated as intermediate with a few difficult areas. They could be very difficult for a new rider who became fatigued negotiating the frequent areas of loose rocks, but for the rider of average skills, they are challenging and fun. To me, this was the best ride I've been on all year. It was challenging without obstacles that were impassable. It provided a bit of suspense since none of us had ever ridden the complete trail before. And the views were outstanding. We started at, at 6,000 feet and rode over the divide at 9,800 feet. The area around the peaks above treeline was great. This is a must-do ride. This area, just before the divide, was one of the spookier areas. There was a narrow, loose, off-camber section followed by loose rocks, all with a high degree of exposure.
is an example of the challenging switchbacks. If you were good enough to ride these switchbacks, it would be difficult with a high degree of risk. Walking the bike made them very manageable. 